Alright, good morning from Raleigh, North Carolina. Just to warn you, it is bustling and noisy in this place. So. <laughs> but I want to talk to you all about uh, the Avengers. Now, this is the British series. Um, you know the one where you got the guy uh, with the bowler hat and the lady, um, you know, with the skin tight stuff. You know, and the dude's got an umbrella, but the umbrella can become a cane sword and stuff like that. Anyway, um, that version, that is the Avengers um, from 1960 to 1968. Um, probably the most prominent um, team in the series would have probably been um, Emma Peel, played by Diana Rigg, who just recently passed away, and um, John Steed, um, played by Patrick Mackney. Um, there were other versions, but at any rate, um, I want to talk about the radio series. Now, the radio series happened from 1971, um, and lasted a little while. Now, right away, you're probably trying to figure out a radio series, and why would it start in 1971? The Avengers was a television program. Well, that's true. Here's where the issue is. You might not know this, but in the country of South Africa, um, in the 1950s, when television was becoming popular here in the United States and it was entering into people's living rooms, um, South Africa held back on it. <laughs> they held back on it a little bit. And... Um, and so what they tried to do was in 1971, they tried to make a television program. But the but, but point is, most South Africans were not going to have access to television. Um, and so rather what they did was they created a number of radio programs. And the um, Avengers was such a radio program. Now, also, I want to make sure that everyone's clear in regards to demographics in South Africa because they're trying to figure out, well, you've seen the Avengers before. If you've ever seen it before, you're trying to figure Okay. Um, it is true that South Africa is predominantly, and still is predominantly black. I mean, it's, not, it's nowhere close. Yeah. But understand um, that the power structure was, you know, white power structure. Um, um, I don't want to get into too much stuff because I don't want to wipe out too much hands, but, but you know, there was a significant, um, if you will, um, former Dutch population that became uh, what was known as Afrikaners. Um, and there was a decent English population too, so they would probably enjoy the Avengers. Okay, so what the um, Avengers radio series tried to do was to take what they considered to be the best team in the Avengers, um, which was John Steed, who was around for just about all of them anyway, and um, Emma Peel. And basically, they revolved around them, um, taking a number of stories. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Avengers. Um, from Venus with Love, um, Cybernauts, um, you know, so, you know, um, episodes like that and then they would make them basically into radio serials um, where you would have one for 15 minutes and then maybe next week or something like that another 15 minutes um, most important sponsor I suppose would be um, there was Kitty Cat ice cream and there was um, Irmo um, laundry soap if my memory serves me correct but um, but basically they would go around, um, you know, in the same super, um, kind of super agent, um, you know, basically secret agent type of, um, or special agent type of mode that they were in um, the television series, um, and, um, you know, basically kick Fanny, I'm not sure how else to put it. Um, you know, one interesting difference was... Um, the richness of voice of this John C. character. Um, if you've heard um, Patrick Mackney, he's kind of had more of a tinny, um, I would say it's probably even north of a Lee Majors, you know, who has that kind of that high-pitched tinny voice. Um, and um, similar, right? I mean, you know, he's a pretty cool guy, got a lot of swag with him. 
But, you know, the boss was a little up there. Well, um, Donald Monant, who played, if you will, John Steve Nisquan, had a richer, thicker voice. Probably even a better voice for the role. Um, you know, but if you've seen pictures of him, you know, this is probably a person you would probably not want to have as a, you know, because of his fit. Um, you know, he's a, you know, a good sized fella. So, um, at any rate, um, it was, it was interesting. Um, what they would also do is they would take these special series or they, they would take these characters, but they didn't care where they took the characters from. Um, they may borrow them from, um, the, uh, Tara King. Um, I'm not sure if you know who Tara King is. Tara King was played by not a British person, but a Canadian person by the name of Linda Thorson. Um, and, um, and she, um, she was pretty um, popular, I suppose. Um, well, I don't know about popular. I guess she was right after, if you will, um, the. She was right after uh, when um, Diana Rigg left. So, um, what did Diana Rigg leave for? James Bond, right? Um, remember, there was the. Um, I think it was the Australian gentleman who played um, James Bond. And, um, you know, and he uh, actually, you know, James Bond actually marries, marries her, right? And she actually is killed. <laughs> and it actually is pretty messed up. But, but at any rate, um, but they basically borrowed um, heavily from there. Um, now, they also borrowed a couple of characters um, from that um, Tara King um, era. Um, Actually, I think they borrowed one. You probably remember from um, the um, Avengers, they had two characters one um, that were in charge over the um, Avengers, um, you know, once you get to the Terra um, Ter King series version. Um, there was um, a person called Mother, but Mother was a man, and he was in a wheelchair, right? Um, and then you had a father. And father was an old blind woman. I can't quite remember if they used father, but they definitely used mother, um, if you will, in this series. Um, it was surreal. Um, they had a lot of good music, a lot of good swanky, upscale, um, high living 70s music. It's actually pretty cool. I find myself jamming out to it. Um, a little bit and they narrate it so you do have a narrator um, in this um, version as opposed to what you had um, in um, these the television series um, you know you had everything from um, like I said gigantic robots attacking people um, to people who are looking for Venus trains and mirrors basically they're using um you know the same stories that you would watch um if you will um on the television program um i loved it i i enjoyed the daylights out of it understanding that this was um made in if you will the um the backdrop of apartheid you know this is, <laughs> i'm not sure how else to put it um, there's a reason why they don't want television, and the reason is because they are thinking that that would be counter to um, their apartheid policies. What else is going to come out on television, right? Um, you know, they saw what television did, <laughs> or was doing, if you will, um, with the civil rights movement. They don't want the same type of thing. Um, when it comes to um, petty and eventually grand apartheid. But I loved it. I, I absolutely love it. I, I find myself just um, listening to it and listening to it and listening to it. Well, anyway, man, is this my time. I've been on this for too long, but I just want to um, thank you if you are, if you did watch this. Um, I just love sharing this. I may talk even a little bit more about this, some of my favorite um, versions of this. But Anyway, um, so long from Raleigh, North Carolina.